Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome back to the channel. I was not going to do a video tonight. I was getting ready actually for a job, but then I couldn't help myself. Let's talk about phased array focusing. What I'm going to do is a comparison with a couple different probes on this half inch weld sample. It is a half inch weld with a bevel only on one side. There's a backing bar on the bottom and it's got a lot of has cracks. I did a little bit of mag beforehand and you can see here in the image that it is just polluted with little has cracks. And we're going to compare this Olympus A31 probe with this Olympus A10 probe. And the comparison is going to be uh, 32 elements uh, and it's 5 megahertz and 0.6 millimeter pitch. Same thing with this guy, except that it's only 16 elements. And this one has a much larger wedge than this one. I'm going to set up two groups each. So I'm going to run four groups on my Veo. Uh, the first two are for this one. So I run a focus group and an unfocus group, and then this guy, focused and unfocused. The focus position I'm using is one and a half T. So this is half an inch. So we're gonna focus at three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters, and away we go. We'll put the big probe here down on the block and slide it back and forth, and really nice. Not a really big surprise, 32 element probes tend to give you much better steering and really good resolution. You can see here, I got a couple has cracks at the beginning and then this one here, which has actually got some depth to it. Looks like I can pick up a little bit of the uh, tip diffracted signals. And as I slide down the length of it, you saw on the mag, there's lots of things to look at. Now, if I switch over to the unfocused group on this one and put this down, you can see it's real messy. And that's not really a big surprise because this is a 32 element probe. It has a really big aperture. And remember, the near zone equation has the diameter or the aperture size on the top and it's squared. So that means if you increase this a little bit, the near zone increases a lot. This is 32 elements. I'm using all of them. It has a really long near zone. If we look at this beam tool, you can see that on a half inch uh, piece of plate, the near zone occupies the entire thickness all the way down to the bottom and all the way back up to the top again. So essentially, with an unfocused uh, group on this type of probe, your entire inspection is in the near zone. That's not good. I am looking right now at the end of the second leg, and it is fuzzballs. Is it completely useless? No, but it's not good. So let's take a comparison now and take a look at this one. This is the Olympus A10. We will take a look at the focused group first. I put this down and run it back and forth. You can see it's not bad at all. Of course, it's not as nice as the 32. That's to be expected. This is a focused group, so this is as good as it's going to get. I could probably increase the focus distance a little bit, but it's not going to matter. And I'm going to tell you in a second why. You see the two has cracks at the beginning and that big one there with the, with the tips on it. And again, no problems finding and characterizing things with this probe. Now, if I switch over to the unfocused group, remember the first time we did this, it went from great to horrible. With this little probe, it goes from great to about the same. And that's because the focus distance on this or the natural focal length is or near zone is so much less than it is on the big probe that it doesn't matter if I focus or not with this one because focal distance is less. Remember, you cannot focus beyond the near zone. So focus or not focus, not much of a difference with the little guy. When you're doing your scan plan, you're probably using something like ES Beam Tool. There's a little button in the upper corner that will uh, show you the length of the near zone. And that's really helpful when you're setting up. So when you've got a probe like this on a half inch weld like that, you'll quickly see that if you run unfocused, the entire volume of the weld from the top to the bottom and all the way back up to the top again is occupied by the near zone. So if you run unfocused, all your inspections in the near zone and you'll end up with big fuzzy red bananas all over the screen and you won't know what's going on but if you use a smaller probe that's not an issue remember the near zone is proportional to the square of the aperture so in this case we have a much smaller aperture it's half the size so our near zone is going to be less than half the length and in this case we can get away with running an unfocused beam on the smaller probe 
Depending on which instrument you use, you have a few choices for your focal plane. On a sauna test, Veo, you can run at a true depth or constant depth. You can run at a projected plane or focus at a, basically a vertical line in front of the wedge. You can also focus along the sound path or just a crescent uh, along the S scan or run natural. A lot of people run at a focus uh, of constant depth at one and a half T. And most of the time, I think this works really well. I would recommend that you experiment with this a little bit. And of course, always do what is written in your procedure. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.